Kids and coaches to another episode of West of Nowhere. I am Levi and I'm Avalo. Um, Shane, still in the desert, still searching for aliens? Maybe. I don't know. He hasn't told me. Uh no, he is he's hanging out in the desert outside Vegas, which there's a lot of stories from Vegas this week, so pretty exciting about that. But pretty excited. I'm pretty exciting about it. So, yeah, anyway, welcome to the show. Uh, Before I get too far ahead of myself, I would like to thank the Patreon people. We have Adam Pacino, Tony Burgess, Mark and Chantel Stadler, Kylie Gangwish, Colby Jordan, TJ Jonak, Colton Zamersla, Jeremy Brazzers, and Boney M. So thank you. If you want to be one of them, go to the link tree that's in the description or type it in, you know, link tree slash walk pod, W-O-K-P-O-D and go to the patreon link do the things um yeah so do that while you're in the link tree you can go to all of the different places uh we have the the facebook the youtube if you're not watching this you could be um if nothing else just to look at my hair right no uh and to see the sick merch which you can also find on the link tree this is two weeks two weeks in a row got the merch on you're welcome pretty slick design this is this picture i took uh, when I saw the f- the Northern Lights for the first time when I moved up here, uh, after I after I had moved up here, and I like the retro vibe, you know, it's kind of fun. So go do that. Um, also review us wherever possible. There's Podchaser that I told you about last week. Do that, please. Thank you. Um, doesn't cost you anything, but it helps us. So do that and share us with your friends. Also, uh, I have a- another podcast coming out. So. Um, by the time this episode is out, I think the, the the trailer will have dropped. So search that in all of the podcast areas. It should be, I've been working on trying to get it like syndicated, I guess, on different podcast platforms. So yeah, uh, it's called The Remedial Scholar, The, T-H-E, Remedial Scholar. Uh, it's going to be me talking about historical topics and, um, you know, actually like thorough research into stuff, um, like scripting it out. The first episode, I can't even remember how many pages it was on like a Google Doc thing, but it was a lot. Um, and so, yeah, the trailer came, uh, it should be out um, wherever you listen to podcasts. I think there's a couple that um, are taking some time to kind of look into, but it should be up on like Spotify and Apple Podcasts at least right now. And then uh, next week will be the intro episode which is like a six minute episode talking about it and then the week after that is when the actual episodes drop the first episodes about uh war dogs um not the movie with jonah hill and miles teller but uh um like dogs in combat (laughs) and the history of dogs and you know it's pretty interesting a lot of cool stuff so anyway if you want to check that out please do i'd be grateful and then um that's it for that kind of stuff i guess oh we got a comment on the youtube uh, just one this week you guys are kind of slacking but it's okay hannah samersla of colton samersla fame uh says so much human remains and murder this time lol definitely got most dangerous game vibes from your submarine guy yeah the uh creepy submarine guy who murdered that lady um i don't know is it most dangerous game or is it just kind of like depraved uh sexual fantasies of like a psycho i don't know um i haven't really read the the short the short story right or is it a full novel i can't remember but I remember we read like a chapter at school one time but that's about it so i need to look into it more but anyway yeah that guy was fucking weird um yeah so so that's all the uh what do they call it i don't know front office stuff i guess we go right into it a lot of news about music um which is kind of fun you know i I mean i wish the news was a little more exciting not annoying or depressing but it is what it is i guess uh yeah so i'm gonna start with 
one that is close to close to some people of the show i know i know kylie likes this band and um yeah so falling in reverse lead singer ronnie radke he's uh he's at it again he's he just likes talking shit on social media i think is he's doing this thing that like a lot of a lot of like older dudes seem to like doing on social media which i find kind of weird and i'm just kind of like you you don't want to be mature about this but you know i guess not (laughs) so a couple weeks ago ronnie radke played a festival near where i live in kadat wisconsin called rock fest and in this festival he (laughs) He was one of many bands, right? But um, the day... Okay, so here's the weird thing. There was a country festival this most recent weekend, or like like last week, I guess. Um, and it rained during that. And then Rockfest, it rained and stormed during that. And then before that, there was another country festival and a bluegrass festival kind of in the same area. Like, not the same area, but like general geographic location and those also got rained on because you know they're in the same geographical location so there's a lot of rain in all of these festivals and i think it's kind of interesting (laughs) that it happened on every single one of them but rock fest you know rain thunderstorm all this well the day falling in reverse was playing is what is when it had rained and so you have fans sitting in rain because it's like a camping festival they're hanging out there in the rain all day um where the you know the pit as it were is got standing water in it i have people who are there telling me this so i didn't go myself can't verify it but that's what i'm going with and ronnie radke comes on twitter a few days later and says uh fans are always allowed to criticize bands their music and performance it's time for bands to criticize crowds kadat wisconsin was boring as hell lol all caps lol uh, what are some cities you band dudes hate playing because you know the crowds are lame? And somebody said, "Standing in rain and thunderstorm, and you bitch that there, there was a crowd. Uh, you bitch that there was a huge crowd waiting for you. Maybe you need to bring your game up and learn to put on a show instead of being a little diva. Very pathetic. Get out of the business if you can't work a crowd and bring their energy up." Uh, yeah, and another fan added uh, that Ronnie uh, gave that attitude from the moment he stepped on the stage. If a singer makes the crowd feel like he's inconvenienced, they won't get into it, which is true. Like, I've been to concerts where, you know, it's a middle of the week kind of show and they're just like, all right, run through the motions, let's do it. And it it does kind of bum you out a little bit because you're like, I want to I want to have a good time. You know, I I wish that I was able to get into this, but you're kind of just kind of being lame. So I don't know. Um, Yeah. So so there's that. And he Ronnie came back to said uh no the crowd fucking all caps sucked even for slipknot just admit it and then all caps ha 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 which this is what i'm talking about this goddamn childish behavior (laughs) he's ha 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 i fucking told you like grow the fuck up dude (laughs) like if you don't think the crowd was good then just say that but you gotta be a child about it and somebody said (laughs) this cracked me up said you call the crowd lazy pieces of shit and then went on to sing all star by smash mouth which he says he does it every show and i don't doubt it but it, it is kind of funny because it's like yeah they're here to fucking you know have a good rock concert and <laughs> you sing smash mouth that probably took them out of the game a little bit especially if they're not used to it yeah so he i guess ronnie radke later went on to say that he was served raw chicken uh from the catering and then also <laughs> and then also had to use the port body like all day which um I don't know it seems it seems like just he's just kind of making he's just trying to say whatever he can to make it seem like it wasn't his fault but then also like simultaneously kind of going well I had all this dumb shit going so obviously I wasn't gonna get into it so really it just kind of falls back on him but I don't know seems pretty lame um and other lame music (laughs) news Miranda Lambert stopped a show recently because some ladies were taking a picture in the audience and this the song that she was playing was Tin Man and she stopped part like she stopped in the middle of it. She said, I'm gonna stop right here for a second. These girls are worried about a selfie and not listening to the song and it's pissing me off a little bit. And if you're like me, you're like, man, these girls must have been like 20 something. No, uh, <laughs> I looked into it and the age range for these ladies 
was like from 30 to 60 years old like they <laughs> it's such a big range and i don't know it's it seemed kind of silly for her to not you know just let it happen because they're just hanging out taking a picture you know how many dumb selfies get taken at concerts in general like you don't always see it maybe because it's you know people in the seats and they're like okay let's get a fucking selfie let's go to you know and it's it's not a big deal then but because they were in like a vip area which also they spent a lot of extra money when they didn't have to to be in that spot and they even put room in the fucking picture for miranda to be in the background because they wanted her to be a part of this moment <laughs> And she just shits on him. Uh, one of the girls, one of the ladies, I guess, uh, said that it felt like I was back at school with the teacher scolding me for doing something wrong and telling me to sit down back in my uh, back in my place. I feel like she was determined to make us look like we were young, immature, and vain, but we were grown women in our 30s to 60s trying to take a picture. Um, she also said that it took, you know, 30 seconds for her to get this uh picture taken and then they sat down uh they were planning on sitting down right after but you know they were stopped <laughs> so i don't know it seems like just a real petty thing to do like to worry about because i don't know it it's not like maybe if they're sitting there for you know 10 minutes doing different photo shoots and shit but like from what it seemed it seemed like it was just like a, all right let's all like get by the railing leave a gap for Miranda, take a picture. Like, it didn't seem like there was a lot of production value in this. So it's not like they could have been making a bunch of commotion, but I don't know, whatever. If I was Miranda, I would have just looked in another direction. Like, <laughs> it's the time to look in the cheap seats at them. Give those fans a moment, because they can't, probably wouldn't have noticed if they were up there doing it. Um, so yeah. In other Vegas news, uh, the murder of Tupac is going on. Um, there's been revitalization in new developments in the murder. Um, so, if you do or do not know, 1996, September 7th, 1996, Tupac and Suge Knight and some other people from Death Row Records were watching a Mike Tyson fight in Vegas. See, another Vegas story. Um, and there's a brawl earlier in the night, and then later, Tupac ends up getting shot in like a poem like a lot like not a drive-by necessarily but it was you know it was a hit right so anyway that's that's what's going on there um so there's a lot of uh i guess a lot of activity going on with it there's been some warrants and uh raids or not yeah i guess raids um they went into a house um looking for different types of material so they were looking for you know storage computer uh, like computer storage stuff uh photos movies and then some some writings from keefe d which is one of the people suspected in this kind of thing uh so yeah it was uh, pretty pretty interesting um and the fact that it's like you know it's all kind of happening like now uh, kind of weird but whatever and also the one of the people um Dwayne Keith Davis aka Keefy D who was a member of the Southside Compton Crips heard of him um has allegedly confessed I've seen some things where um he kind of talked about it and and also people that have been like investigating this murder for a long time they're like yeah we kind of know who did it but it's because the fucking Las Vegas and uh LA police departments were just so so rocky back then that they're like ah whatever so anyway they were, <laughs> so it's suspected that Keefy D who was related to the guy who um got beat up by Tupac and some other other members of death row uh yeah so they <laughs> ended up getting retribution basically anyway so they raided this house and here's what they found pretty exciting uh they were looking for all the things i mentioned plus uh a uh book called compton street legend which is written by keefe d and they found a pokeball usb drive now if i was a part of like one of the most notorious murders in modern history it's where i would put all the information on a pokeball usb drive you're goddamn right most secure thing in the world phone four tablets four laptops 11 40 caliber cartridges a copy of the book compton street legends copy of a vibe magazine about shakur um marijuana and two black tubs can Containing photographs uh, so yeah pretty interesting we'll see we'll see how it uh, all pans out but I thought that was I thought that was interesting I thought it was 
you know kind of fun that things like this are being brought back up you know in the in the news sphere right so um now we're gonna get into the most controversial music news of the day or the week fucking jason aldean god damn it he's got this song that he just released um now i'm gonna say released because he didn't write it so just keep that in your head going forward uh song called try that in a small town which is i don't know it's such a fucking weird mood because it's like first of all who are you pandering to right now like <laughs> i i made the comment earlier in the week when uh when it had dropped that uh that it kind of reminded me of those those billboards in the middle of nowhere in like super conservative states it was like choose god your mom did you know or choose life your mom did you know about like anti-abortion or um yeah just <laughs> jesus saves like in the middle of a cornfield with nobody around and it's the weirdest like you know small scale pandering because most of the people that see that billboard probably agree with you so what are you doing like what's the point so that's the kind of vibe i don't know i don't know the technical term of what that is called other than like pandering or grifting but like so that's that's the that's the sentiment i feel from this song um and i seen i seen this comedian god damn got to talk about small town and then my, <laughs> just went straight redneck to speak okay anyway i saw a video on tiktok of this comedian who had like the thickest kentucky accent i've ever seen uh or heard i guess can't see it uh talking about the song and it's like you know jason aldean's got this song try that in a small town and <laughs> the first lines go sucker punch somebody on a sidewalk carjack an old lady at a red light and he said what <laughs> he said whoa what's this Times square <laughs> got a red light <laughs> that shit made me laugh so hard like because if you've been in any small towns you know it's just a stop sign in the middle of the in the middle maybe there's a flashing yellow light um <laughs> so yeah that that shit made me laugh but yeah so there's some specific lyrics that are people are like okay listen buddy what's happening and the the impression that people are getting not just from the lyrics but also the music video um contains a uh, <laughs> uh what is it called now I'm blanking on the word a courthouse there we go um in a town in tennessee i believe that is a you know was the site of a pretty pretty brutal lynching in the 20s so you got this song that is essentially like um hey man like we us good old boys we do what we can in our small town and we we fight for our own goddamn which statistically is not true but whatever um <laughs> there's a lot of people that live in small towns that like to think they do but they don't so keep that in mind so anyway you got this courthouse and then also you have a bunch of what jason aldean said was real news footage um taken that was like riots and you know protests different things like that essentially essentially boiling down to the fact that you can't do any riots in small towns because the small town people will will stop you is essentially what jason aldean is trying to like that's what he's saying but the perception of this is not that the perception is this is the fact that you're using footage supposedly real news archival footage from the protests and riots in 2020 following the murder of george floyd brianna taylor that kind of thing and you're using it to have this pseudo um i don't even know it's like this weird small town tough boy image where you're like nobody's gonna do this to us because we got guns and it comes off a little uh sundown towny which if you don't know what a sundown town is allow me to elaborate a sundown town is a town back in like you know um when it was still segregation and you know jim crow like that time where if you were not white and found outside of you know your home after sundown you probably weren't gonna make it so it's got this weird vibe and especially because like they don't use this courthouse as, as just a like a random backdrop it is it is very much a part of the video like they have like numerous panning up and down shots of it they have like different like all these different angles and it's like all right man what are we trying to say and you have to take accountability for the perception of shit too like if you think that people are gonna go hey 
that's not a good look. Or if people do go, hey, that's not a good look, you should probably be like, you know what, I can see why that's kind of fucked up. But instead, what he's doing, and everybody around it is doing, is doing this annoying thing where, number one, you're criticizing this video or in this song that, oh, it's just about good old-fashioned self-defense. I'm just trying to protect myself from criminals. How dare you? Ah. And so now you have a group of people going, oh, well, they think that defending yourself against criminals is racist. What does that tell you? Which is not a good look. And it doesn't surprise me that they put that position out there so then people would be like, oh, well, of course I'm going to defend this song. Like, you guys are crip. Like, so there's that. But then there's also this weird, stupid thing that um, he, so he's been decrying cancel culture about this video being taken because CMT decided to pull it. They're like, whatever. All right, we'll pull it. Now, you're probably going to go, hey, man, that is kind of fucked up, right? But like, they shouldn't just pull it. That is kind of a little sensory. No, not really, because you can still listen to that fucking song anywhere. You can watch the video on YouTube. You can listen to it on all of the things. That, and also, why do we keep having this conversation? <laughs> when somebody when somebody says, hey man, we're not going to do this. Like, we're not going to have it on our platform. That is not censorship. That is them making a decision that is wholly theirs to make like i can't go hey fox news you don't run my podcast on your station 24 7 you're censoring me you're taking away my civil liberties why do you hate me like why do you hate america and the constitution because that's not how it fucking works like they're not that's not their job to put your information out there censorship free speech that's coming from the government going hey you're not allowed to say this we're gonna throw you in jail for saying this we're gonna kill you for saying this. Something that has not happened to Jason Aldean or anybody that really supports the song ever, but they like to do, they like to say that it does. So it's it's super annoying. And also the song's bullshit. <laughs> the song is just straight garbage. And not in just the fact that it's a bad song and it's a Jason Aldean song, because let's be honest, he's not great. But the fucking <laughs> the things he's like, this is stuff we stand up for in small towns like the amount of first of all he's not even from a small town probably hasn't ever lived in one ever because i looked it up he's from macon georgia he lives in nashville now he's had money for way too long so even living in a small town it's like it's a small rich town so whatever um but i was like oh well let's look at some things that i know to be uh a pretty big deal in small towns because somebody said oh oh man he's standing up for like family values and things well he doesn't talk about defending some woman from her husband beating the shit out of her and you know intimate partner violence is statistically higher in rural er rural areas than urban areas so that's kind of confusing because that's an issue right also child abuse like physical child abuse statistically higher although they're probably proud of that here's the other thing you're more likely to die at a younger age in a rural area than you are in an urban area and he's got nothing on that he's not he's not we don't drive our friends to the hospital because it's small town and i don't give a shit about you actually <laughs> uh i don't know <laughs> So, so there's that, um, there's a bunch of different, there's a bunch of different things that statistically rural, rural areas are not better to live in. And, you know, I don't know. It's, it's weird that he puts these things specifically like things that probably only will ever happen in an urban city. Why? Because urban environments have a higher wealth disparity and when you put people in a spot where they're not going to be able to financially provide for themselves over generations and generations, yeah, there's probably gonna be some crime. Guess what? There's a lot of crime in small towns too, but it's a different kind of crime. You got, well, first of all, a lot of catalytic converters getting stolen in small towns. A lot of meth, right? And then you get these other types of crimes like that are only ever going to happen in small towns, like crop theft, shit like that. So, like, you have a higher concentration of people, which always means, like, it's just always going to produce 
higher crime rates because you get a lot more friction going on but the types of specific types of crimes also like hate crimes not great not great in the small town like <laughs> uh i don't know one of my friends posted this thing the other day uh, and was talking about Matthew Shepard and Matthew Shepard like I don't know why but his his name came to my head first Matthew Shepard was a man who was uh murdered left for dead in uh I think it was Wyoming like real real bad hate crime and Wyoming is one giant small town because you know the population is n insignificant like the whole state is all small towns <laughs> um, but anyway uh, Matthew uh, Matthew Shepard was murdered by two dudes in the small town and you know there's so many other stories that are like adjacent to because it's so hard to like there's there's not as much like I don't know uh, like witnesses different shit like that like you you're you're polling for information from lower like just statistically lower areas i don't know so small town living not as great as uh some people make it out to be also weirdly enough jason aldean wrote a song called like a rearview town where he talks about um him hating small town life and he's like i gotta get the hell out of here so he tried but then you know a few years later he's got this song so i don't know it's very pandery it's such a grifting shitty song and I've made this comparison, I think, personally, but I don't know if I've ever said it on here, but it's like, like, you know when people go out of their way to, like, everything's gotta be patriotic, they have 14 flags on their t-shirts, or, like, the, uh, I, I kneel for the cross and stand for the flag, like, those kind of shirts, where they're just, like, I don't know, it's, it's a fucking stupid comment to make, but there's people who just eat that shit up, they're like, oh, blah, 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 blah um so yeah i don't know that's the kind of vibe i get from it like you're just rehashing shit that people already want to believe and you're saying it in a format where they're like i like this like the uh pandering country song by bo burnham like you're just hitting key core points that country music like has become and then you throw in a couple messages that you know that people are gonna go yeah brother yeah let's go um so there's that uh and it's garbage. It's just garbage, garbage music. Anyway, so related to that, there was a person who on TikTok said that uh, that was debunking Jason Aldean, uh, saying that he only used real news footage. And this person, Destiny Stark, uh, <laughs> went and found that it was uh, like stock footage. Uh, some of it was like stock video footage. Um, yeah, and she has been getting racial hate from it which is super weird i know it's crazy um the some of the clips that he uses are um protests in montreal canada protests in kiev ukraine so that's pretty cool um uh, <laughs> the pro the ukrainian one was from 2013 so that's kind of weird and yeah so now he's eh, i don't know but sh uh, this lady's getting r racist hate mail about a song that's not racist just ask jason aldean it's got the vibes of uh what was it who's the people that don't sell kids wayfair no we don't sell kids obviously just ask us him jason aldean no it's not racist it just uses a lot of like trigger and buzzwords that will get other racist people to go <laughs> Yeah, brother let's go we're just some good old boys some frontier justice baby that's what we do anyway so twitter is no longer twitter it's x x.com which redirects to twitter.com which is very confusing because i you log on to twitter.com and it still says twitter.com but whatever fucking elon confusing the shit out of me also what a like a <laughs> it's such a edgy like teen i'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a company just called X. You figure out what it means. All right, dude. We get it. You're 12. Whatever. Um, back to some fun and exciting news. Not really. Uh, Miami woman, woman in Florida. This should read because it's such a Florida woman story. Uh, arrested after trying to hire a hitman to kill her three-year-old son. What is up with fucking Florida people trying to kill children? Casey Anthony, the lady from last week. This lady right here. What is happening? I don't understand. Um, and also she got bonded out of jail. I hope they don't give the kid to her. That'd be fucked up. Uh, yeah. So they were, uh, investigators say that they were contacted on Tuesday by a man who operates a fake hire an assassin website to report that a woman had contacted the operator to arrange a murder for hire, uh, for the young child. The website found uh, founder created an online site to catch and curb these uh, 
those looking to hire a killer. That sounds like a great cover story for a guy who actually kills people. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't I don't know who this guy is, but I mean, how funny would it be? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> no, this isn't a real Hitman website. What I do is I find people who probably can't afford to pay for a real Hitman and I send them to the police because they're criminals and I'm not. <laughs> So, that's, you know, is what it is, I guess. I don't know. Um, real quick one about another Florida story. Ron DeSantis, the fascist uh, government governor from Florida, said that he's going to launch an inquiry. His state government's going to launch an inquiry to Bud Light's parent company, AB InBev, uh, over its partnership with uh, transgender social media influencer Dylan Mulvaney. Uh, he said that uh, he, Ron DeSantis, accused the beverage company of not following its fiduciary. Ah, fi fiduciary, food fiduciary, I don't know, financial duties, basically, uh, to its shareholders and pensioners by collaborating with Mulvaney. Except for that's not what fucking happened. <laughs> like, it wasn't like a, hey, you're our new spokesperson. It was like a, hey, here's a gift. If you send, if you post about it on your social media, hey, cool, free press for us. But it's not like they're, I don't know, this is such a stupid fucking thing. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm so sick of people not knowing how shit works and then just going, like, this is another fucking pandering thing right here. Like, yeah, well, my base thinks that Blood Light made Dylan Mulvaney their new CEO, so we're gonna sue him. What the fuck, dude? Uh, the actors, writers of Hollywood still striking. Um, Dwayne The Rock Johnson made a donation to the Screen Actors Guild American Federation of television and radio artists what a fucking insane title that is um so it uh doesn't um doesn't say specifically but he is reported to have made a seven figure donation to the foundation um which is a charity associated with this union and not necessarily a part of it but that's pretty cool um yeah so a lot of these um strikes are happening um due to lack of pay appropriate amount of pay and residuals for people that work in hollywood and make movies and such um it's been kind of weird like and i said this before i think maybe on the show but like the last time we had this big strike um we got a bunch of reality tv shows maybe maybe that means that podcasts are gonna go through the roof we're gonna have 20s and 30s amounts of listeners now so <laughs> um yeah be pretty interesting to see how that plays out because there's they're already starting to like push movies back um so yeah anyway in texas a man was accused of being on drugs and uh turns out that guy was actually dying of a heat stroke um he did die of a heat stroke and her the mother of this worker has filed a lawsuit against the employer dude i don't know how fucked you gotta be to <laughs> like fumble the bag so hard in a company like i remember working for several places that were, were like dude like heat if you're if you're hot i don't care you can take a break like it, it gets hot it's not your fault go drink some water you know if your body like everybody's body's different so you know you can't handle certain things take a break go get some water sit in the ac find somewhere cool and it's been crazy hot and it doesn't necessarily mean anything bad's happening to our planet but like this is stupid like this is a lawsuit waiting to happen because safety inside of safety is also like physical safety in regards to you know uh keeping warm when it's cold keeping cold when it's warm keeping hydrated these are all things that get talked to like in a normal company to the debt like they go so hard on it and for somebody to go nah this guy's probably on drugs i think <laughs> you fucked up oh man they're gonna lose that lawsuit so bad um yeah i guess this guy it was last year that it happened but um the lawsuit was just filed this year so anyway still it was hot last year too anyway <laughs> so what else is happening lebron james's son collapsed and uh had a cardiac condition uh is now stable and no longer in the icu but holy shit cardiac arrest i wonder um doesn't say where it was oh yeah in los angeles it's fucking hot there too everybody's everybody's dying a heat stroke 
right now. Uh, but he's he's not dead. He he lived. But anyway, that's kind of crazy. So let's go to the Billboard 200 number one. Speak now. Taylor's version. There it is, baby. Number two, One Thing at a Time, Morgan Wallen. Number three, Genesis by Peso Pluma. Number four, Midnight's by Taylor Swift. Number five, Dangerous Double Album, Morgan Wallen. Number six, Lover, Taylor Swift. Goddamn. Seven, SOS by SZA. Eight, Pink Tape, Lil Uzi Vert. Uh, nine, A Gift and a Curse by Gunna. And ten, Folklore, Taylor Swift. Whoa, Taylor Swift. Um, wild. That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of albums there, Taylor. One, two, three, four. Four. Also saw an article that said that she's now the she's got the most number one albums of any female in history, which is, or I don't know I, I I can't remember if it was female artist or not I don't know either way she's fucking killing it. Um, yeah, listen to Taylor's version of Speak Now. I heard it's vastly different. She made like some songs two seconds shorter, other songs like ten seconds longer. It's crazy, crazy shit happening. Um, yeah. Don't forget to do all the things like subscribe, share us, review us, link tree it up, buy the merch, do all the things, listen to my new show, uh, shameless plug. And then also uh, the Remedy Room, kicking it with the Kellys, no new friends in Dutch and Denver. Listen to those guys. And that's it. I've had enough. Peace out, bitches. Keep your bartender.